right, guys. For my 214 athletes, just a couple things to think about uh, going into workout 14.1, the double under snatch workout. We're going to take a look at two pieces, both the prep phase and the execution phase of the workout. First, taking a look at prep. We want to mobilize the hamstring and hip capsule to start. Uh, when we snatch, we're going to have a high hip position in the bottom of that snatch compared to a maximal load snatch. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the back. We don't have length in the hamstring and the hip capsule. So starting with something like a banded hip distraction would be great. Second piece, working on a shoulder internal rotation. Something like a bully stretch would be great here. It's going to help us keep the bar close to the body. If the bar is flying out in front because we're missing internal rotation, we're going to smoke the shoulders early on. So, so far, hip capsule and hamstring banded bully stretch would be great. Moving on past that, want to know your pace going into this thing. Try and work out what you think your score could be. Know what that is in rounds per minute, uh, and then work backward. Knowing your pace is going to degrade a little bit. Start a little bit faster than that average pace, knowing you're going to finish a little bit slower than that average pace. That gives you some waypoints along the way to hit. Uh, next up, right before you guys go, for the athletes trying to get a maximal score today, want 90 to 120 seconds of work at about 80% before you start your workout. That's gonna pop up the heart rate, get the cardiovascular system going. Two to three minutes of rest after that to bring it back down, get back to homeostasis, and that'll avoid the shocked feeling in the first couple minutes of the workout. That's the prep phase. Now going into the execution of the workout. So first thing, especially if you're doing this in a competitive environment, breathe, move with intent through the beginning of the workout. Even the big dogs last night were not moving with a sense of urgency early in the workout. Pace yourself. Don't get caught up in the adrenaline and cook through the first couple rounds. Burn yourself out. Stay smooth. Next up, we're going to keep the bar close on the snatch. Get to the hip. You notice Marcus was not getting the pop off the hip last night. He started fatigue early. Keep the bar close, both on the pop as well as going up overhead to save your shoulders. Uh, I would like to see a power snatch out of most of our athletes tonight. Obviously, there are some reasons that you might not power snatch. So you can go to a muscle snatch. But receiving a little bit dip down and then standing back up doesn't take a whole ton of time and it can really save your mechanics, especially late in the workout. Uh, clean and jerk is totally acceptable today. So if the clean and jerk is an optional movement, uh, I would only do this if you're at a fatigue point. If you're at a point where you're staring at the bar, you're not getting reps. If you feel like you're going to have to take a 10 to 15 second break, don't take the break. Go to the bar, get a hook grip on it, pop to the shoulders and going up overhead. The clean and jerk will allow you to move when your grip and back are smoked where a power snatch might not work. Uh, final piece on double unders, we're gonna glue your legs together, keeping the feet together, uh, and then also keep your eyes up with eyes down on the double under late in the workout and start to bring us forward. We're gonna start to miss. Eyes up, legs glued together should keep us moving. Guys, that's what we got for 14.1. Good luck, Godspeed.